Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this tutorial on structure attributes in C. Structure attributes are a way that you can more precisely control the actual layout of your structs in memory. Now, this tutorial actually comes to you from a friend of mine named Camel Coder, who was teaching me about this on our Discord server. I've been doing a lot of work lately on GitHub and Discord, so if you haven't had a chance to check any of that out yet, I have links in the description and I would really recommend going over there and seeing what we're up to if you are interested in programming and programming projects. So what is a struct attribute and how do we set them up and why do we even need them to begin with? Well, let's look at this example here. Here we have an example struct and it has three fields, a character A, a character B, and an integer X. Now characters take up one byte of memory each and an integer takes up four bytes of memory. So this struct should in total be six bytes. But if we actually run the program, which will print out the size of this struct, what we'll see after we compile and run is that it's actually eight bytes. So what's going on? Why would it be eight bytes when we can see it only requires six bytes? Well, it has to do with the CPU and the way the CPU wants to read things and the way that your compiler tries to create things to make it fit what the CPU wants to read. We can use a spreadsheet to see how this is working. So for example, if we think of each cell here as being a byte in memory, we can color them to show what we are trying to illustrate here. So I fill it with orange. There, sorry, that one. That will be our first character, okay? Now we can fill it with red, and that will be our second character. And now we can fill in these four bytes with green, and that is our integer. And we can see that is the total size of our struct. But our processor wants to read things according to the word size, okay? So it doesn't read one byte at a time, and it doesn't read one bit at a time. It reads a chunk of bytes, and it depends on the type of CPU you have. So if you have a 32-bit CPU, 32 bits is four bytes, so your word size is going to be four bytes, and your processor is going to try and read four bytes at a time. Now, if you have a 64-bit CPU, then your word size is going to be eight bytes, and so it will do things according to that size. So what does that mean for our struct here? Well, our word actually is going to be half of what you see. So that is the first word, and this is the second word. And your CPU is going to be able to read in one word per clock cycle. And what this means is that the integer field here is cut in half, and we would need to use two CPUs clock cycles to read in this one field. And that is inefficient. So by default, the compiler is going to take those and move them here. So we'll sacrifice these two bytes with just empty. There you have nothing in them. We'll sacrifice those two bytes so that we can read in this entire integer field in a single CPU cycle. And this is more efficient in terms of processing, but there are circumstances where we are sensitive to this sort of sacrifice of bytes. So there are times where we want to tell the compiler not to do this. And that's what we would use an attribute for. So if we come back to our code, I can simply put underscore underscore attribute, and then two parentheses, packed. And what we'll see is that this tells the compiler not to create things according to this schema, but to use as little memory as possible for every struct. So now my int field is going to take two CPU cycles to read in, but the total size of my struct is going to be six. As we can see, if I recompile and run, now it is six. Now there are actually a number of different attributes that we can use. All of them are t designed to allow us to control the alignment or padding of these structs in memory. Most useful is probably going to be the packed one, but I'll put a link to this list in the description. So I hope this was helpful and useful for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, maybe you would consider subscribing to the channel for more content relating to programming and the C programming language. 
So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.